We are going to move from the factory floor to the ocean, specifically coral reefs. This is really great. Globally, coral reefs support almost 1 billion people and are one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. But coral reefs continue to decline at an unprecedented rate despite a surge in data, funding, and political will to support the success and the health of coral reefs. So for researchers who are trying to remedy this, the issue isn't a lack of access to data. Currents, corals, water, weather have all been instrumented and are easily monitored. What is lacking is a way to visualize all that information and a way to assess the impact of proposed policy changes, like was mentioned, such as dredging a channel or a rise in wet weather temperature on a given reef. So Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute uh, is going to, we're going to have a representation for, from Anne Cohen from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. She's going to tell us how she built the world's first coral reef digital twin. Anne, come on in. Very excited to have you here. I'm going to leave the stage to you, and you're okay. going to take everyone through it. Great. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Anne Cohen. I'm a scientist at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. That's about an hour, an hour and a half away from here on Cape Cod. I don't usually look like this. I'm usually in a wetsuit with a scuba tank, and I'm wet and underwater. But I'm really, really pleased to be here today to share some of the work that we're doing with Siemens Technology Corporation, specifically Virginia Millard's digital twinning group, to really build the first digital twin of a coral reef ecosystem. We have two problems. One is environmental, one is informational. These problems are not new, but what is new, maybe four or five years new, is that we actually now have the scientific expertise and the technology to solve these problems. What our digital twin, coral reef digital twin does is bring or try to bring these disparate universes together to create ways to do this. Coral reefs, I love them. Coral reefs inspire, they educate us, they entertain us. But did you know that they also support the livelihoods of an estimated one billion people around the world? That's like one-seventh of the global human population. They are also home to 25% of all marine species. So it's no surprise to you in this room that coral reefs is important, but we also know that they're under severe decline. They are in big trouble. In fact, most coral reefs today don't look like that. They look like this. To date, we've lost about 50% of our coral reef surface area. So many of the coral reefs that we dive into looking like this. What may surprise you is that we actually have the data, the knowledge, the capacity to turn this around, to save those coral reefs that are actually still living, to bring the ones back that have been devastated by local activities, by climate change, to regrow coral reefs like we regrow crops. We have this information, we have these data, we have these models. The problem is, People can't use our data. The decision makers on the ground, the conservationists, the restoration practitioners, the managers, the risk assessors, the fishermen, they're not using our data. I want to give you an example just to bring this point home. This is Palmyra Atoll a remote coral reef in the middle of the Central Pacific. You can either get there on a sailboat or you can fly in a tiny, tiny little plane. I'd rather go on a sailboat. <laughs> Palmyra Atoll is a US national monument. It's a wildlife refuge. But during World War II, the US military 
occupying Palmyra at the time, built a causeway across Palmyra's lagoon. And you can see that causeway here in these images. Today, there is no life in those lagoons at all. And the US Fish and Wildlife Agency, the Nature Conservancy, the Environmental Protection Agency are trying to get the US military back in to undo that damage. But first, they need to show that it's the causeway that has been the, the driver of this lagoon of death, these lagoons of death. And then they need to demonstrate that if the military comes in and spends millions and millions of dollars removing that causeway or removing parts of that causeway or strategically blowing up some of that causeway, we could, we could bring Palmyra, this US national monument, back to its pristine state. We actually have the scientific capacity, as I said, within the past five years, to build realistic, three-dimensional, meter-scale models of that entire coral reef ecosystem. And we have the capability to conduct what-if scenarios so that we can take out parts of the causeway in our model. And we can see how that intervention will change the circulation and the temperature on the reef, making it more conducive to life. And we can do that thousands and thousands of times. We can try different interventions. And we don't have to do it for real. We can do it in the model. Essentially, what we're creating, what we're able to create, is a digital twin. So let me show you what that looks like. Can you see? <laughs> it's exactly what it looks like. I don't understand it, do you? Coral reef managers can't understand it. Agencies can't use it. So guess what? Nothing gets done. What if we could create a virtual ecosystem of Palmyra Atoll that is as close to real as we can possibly get with our models. Now, let's, let me just emphasize how good we are in the scientific community. We can get to within 0.2 degrees Celsius of observational temperatures at any point across that coral reef ecosystem and down to 200 foot depth. We are so good at this. We understand that physics so well. What if we could create a virtual world based on reality and bring it to your computer, to your cell phone, wherever you are, so that instead of trying to understand complex code, trying to access multiple different platforms of data that nobody can understand, we actually bring this environment to you in a universal visual language. What you're looking at right here is the high-resolution bathymetry of Palmyra Atoll, and you can see the causeway on my left. That's now separating those two lagoons. Not only can you go in and look at the, at the reef with no water in it, see what's down there. With the point of your mouse, you can t see what depth it is. We can now overlay the life that's there as well. So what we've done here is we've taken Allen Coral Atlas benthic maps and we've superimposed them upon the 3D bathymetry of the atoll. So you can see where the corals are, you can see where the coral and algae are, you can see where the seagrass is. 
You can see it. It's real. It's not a number. It's actually there, and it's based on real data. OK. And now what we can do is we can actually choose to run a temperature simulation in the model. So what you're looking at here is the lagoon kind of angle, those, those lagoons, with a causeway in the upper left there, my left. And I'm just going to uh, play that again for you. This would be a user going in, choosing to run a temperature simulation, and watching how that heat builds up in that lagoon because the causeway is there. That red blob is the temperature of the lagoon because the water is stuck. It can't go anywhere. Then the user can go in on their own computer, eventually on their cell phone, and remove that causeway. Run the simulation again. And guess what happens? You remove the causeway, temperatures cool down. In fact, they cool down right to the bottom of the lagoon. The currents between the lagoons are now connected again, so the fish larvae are connecting between the lagoons, the coral larvae are going back and forth. And the lagoon is coming back to life. And one of the most important things is that not only can the user, the decision maker, see the consequences of the intervention, they can play God and conduct those interventions themselves, see what happens, but then they can take these visuals and share them with folks at DOD. What better way to convince people of things needing to get done? What we can also do, and this is what we're going to start doing in the next year, is actually geolocate three-dimensional benthic information as visuals into our digital twin. So not only can you remove the causeway, get that temperature back down, get those currents going, but you'll be able to see the coral reef coming back to life. Okay, so that's where we're headed with our phase one coral reef digital twin. Okay, here's where I wanna go. I wanna get in my plane. This is Microsoft's flight simulator. I want to fly to Palmyra, and I wanted to look like Palmyra. I wanted to look like the reef that I go into on a tiny plane when I visit there. And I want to be able to take my causeway destruction. I don't want to use the word bomber, because that's too destructive my causeway removal kit, and fly over that causeway, take pieces out, and see what actually happens to the temperature and the flow and the corals as I'm flying over there. We need folks from the video game world, from the tech world, to help us to reach more people. With our digital twin right now, we are increasing the utility of the scientific data a thousandfold. I want to get millionfold. I want to get kids in here. I want to get teachers. I want to get fishermen. I want to get anybody who has interest in coral reef or investment in coral reef. That's a billion people around the world. My feeling is this is how we do it. Thank you so much.